In this problem, we're told a centrifuge in a medical laboratory rotates at an angular velocity of 3600 revolutions per minute. When switched off, it rotates through 50 revolutions before coming to rest. Find the constant angular acceleration in radians per second squared of the centrifuge. So imagine this is our centrifuge right here, and so we know it's going to be rotating, right? And so basically, the first thing you always want to do for these problems is write down the variables we're given. Right? So this is going to be rotational kinematics, right? And so we're going to write down all the rotational kinematic variables they give us. Right? So let's go ahead and do that. So basically, the first thing we're given is we're told it rotates at an angular velocity of 3600 revolutions per minute. So they're telling us the initial angular velocity, or omega zero, right? So they tell us it's 3600 revolutions per minute, right? So we know it's going to start with that. And then we know it's going to rotate through a distance of 50 revolutions and then come to rest. Right, so we know the final angular velocity is zero radians per second, right? Because it's coming to rest, it's going to be uh, zero, right? Because it's not moving. And we also know theta, or the angle which it turns, right, is going to be 50 revolutions, right? So this is basically the information we're given. And what we want to do is go ahead and solve for the constant angular acceleration, right? So we're trying to solve for alpha, which is the angular acceleration. So I'll just say alpha equals question mark. So how do we solve for it? So the way you want to solve these it's just like normal kinematic equations, but with rotational kinematic variables. So you should remember how kinematics work, right? And so essentially what we're going to do is just replace them with uh, the rotational kinematic ones. So basically the equation we want to use is this one right here, which is omega squared, or the angular or final angular velocity squared, is equal to the initial angular velocity squared plus 2 times alpha times uh, delta theta, or the change in theta, right? So this is really delta theta because this is what it changes. So delta theta or theta, it's basically the same thing. And so what this, sh what this uh, should be familiar to is this one, v squared equals v sub zero squared plus 2a times delta x, right? So you should remember this equation from kinematics. And so notice the variables are just the same, but uh, for rotational things, because this is rotating and the other ones are just like linear, right? So just keep that in mind. But basically all we have to do is just plug in the variables we were given into this formula. Right? And then we'll be able to solve for alpha, which is what we want, the angular acceleration. But notice uh, the units this is in. Right? So notice this is revolutions per minute. This is revolutions. And what we do is when we solve this, your omega, right, your angular velocity, has to be in radians per second. Right? Theta has to be in radians. And then I always write, whenever something's in zero, I just write it in radians per second because that's what it needs to be in. Because right? they want this in radians per second squared. And these have to be in the units I said before if we want this in radians per second squared. So just keep that in mind. First thing we have to do is convert both of these units. So the first one to convert, I'll just do theta first because it's easier. 50 revolutions. We know that one revolution, right, if I put it on the bottom, is the same as 2 pi radians, right? That's a conversion you have to know. So one revolution is 2 pi radians, meaning if you just multiply by 2 pi, the revolutions will cancel, right? And so 50 times 2 pi is just 100 pi, right? So it's going to be 100 pi radians. That's the same as 50 revolutions. So that's going to be in the correct units now. So let's write that right here. So equal to 100 pi radians. Now let's do this one, 300 in, or 3,600 revolutions per minute. Uh, we want it in radians per second. So 3,600 revolutions per minute. Let's start with the minute. So we know one minute, right? If we put it on top, it'll cancel the bottom, is the same as 60 seconds. So that'll cancel out the minutes. Right now we've got revolutions per second, but we want it in radians per second, right? So we know one revolution is the same as two pi radians, right? What I said before. So basically, that'll cancel out the revolutions. And now we just have radians per second. So you just want to do 3,600, basically divide by 60, and then multiply by 2 pi. When you do that, you'll get 376.9911 and so on. I'm just going to use 377 for this, right? Because it's so close. It's basically going to be the same thing. So 377, and then it's going to be radians per second. So radians per second, that's going to be the angular velocity right, the initial angular velocity. So I'm just going to draw an arrow, just keep in mind uh, that's what it is, right? So now we have these in the correct units, right? We got this in radians per second, this is in radians, this is in radians per second. So now we can just plug it in and solve. So omega final, right, zero, is so it's just zero squared, it's still zero. Uh, so just zero equals omega zero is 377. So 377 squared plus two times alpha times delta theta. Delta theta is 100 radians, 100 pi radians, sorry. So 100 pi radians. And so now what we can do is just go ahead and solve for alpha. So I'm going to move this to the other side. So we'll just get minus 377 squared is equal to 2 alpha times 100 pi. We can divide both sides by 2 times 100 pi, right? So this is just 200 pi. That'll cancel out that. You'll just have alpha. So you have alpha equals minus 377 squared dividing by 200 pi. Right, all we're doing is just doing some simple algebra. So go ahead and do this. So do 377 
right? 377 squared, uh, and then divide by 200 pi. And when you do this, you're gonna get two, you're gonna get alpha equals negative, right? Because keep in mind it's negative, because we're slowing down, that makes sense, right? Uh, we're decelerating, right? Because we go from a speed to zero, meaning we have to slow down, so that's why it's negative. Negative 226.205, so I'm just gonna say, I'll write it over here, so alpha equals minus 226.2, and then the units are what? Radians uh, per second squared. So yeah, alpha is gonna be equal to minus 226, uh, 0.2 uh, radians per second squared, right? So you can round if you a different way if you want, but just keep in mind this is going to be alpha. Uh, and so yeah, the constant angular acceleration or alpha, this is going to be your answer. And hopefully you found this useful.